Hey friend, welcome. I'm so excited to have you here listening to another episode of the Pattern Design Circle podcast. Here we talk all about the ins and outs of designing knit and crochet patterns and running a business that makes it all possible. I'm Jessica, your host, knitting pattern designer, design mentor, and the friend in your ear. Can't wait to dive right in. The Pattern Design Circle podcast is sponsored by the Pattern Design Circle, a membership community for knit and crochet pattern designers that are feeling lost, lonely, or frustrated in their business. It connects you with a supportive community that's always eager to answer your questions and help you through the hard times. And there's loads of resources and activities specifically catered to business and designing. Sound like your jam? Check it out at snickerdoodlenits.com forward slash design dash circle. That's snickerdoodle like the cookie, knits, K-N-I-T-S dot com forward slash design dash circle. All right, let's get into it. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Pattern Design Circle podcast. I'm so excited to be here chatting with you once again. And here we have another replay from Instagram Live that I hosted on my design Instagram with a designer. So every month I host a featured designer to really dive into their design process, their creativity, um, what inspires them, all of that kind of information that we loved. We love the stories of other designers. So I've been capturing those on Instagram and then sharing the replays here with you um, in case you, you haven't seen them. So today I am sharing my discussion with Megan Nodecker, who is the designer behind Pip and Pim. And it was really fun to have this conversation because Megan was one of the earlier designers that I discovered because I had a mutual friend that adored Megan's work. Um, and so, yeah, this was this was a really fun chat. Uh, talked about all of the things. Um, and as per usual, felt like we could have just talked chatted forever. So I hope you really enjoy this conversation. I hope you find something valuable from it. Um, you can then apply, you know, whether it's it's a mindset thing or strategy thing or just the inspiration of listening to another designer. So enjoy. And welcome to this month's featured designer chat. I am well, if you aren't familiar with me, I am Jessica. I'm the knitting pattern designer behind Snickerdoodle Knits and design mentor behind Pattern Design Circle. And every month I have a featured designer that comes and chats with me. And we just talk about their designs. We talk about their design process and we talk about lots of stuff outside of designing. So today I'm super excited to have Megan Nodecker of Pip and Pin joining me alive and I think I just sent an invite so <laughs> hopefully everything will work there hello Hi. I'm so hello. excited to see you I'm so excited to be here I'm just gonna fix that a little bit <laughs> it's, it's it's funny because you know I've done this this is my seventh month now doing regular monthly lives with other people and I can never remember which way the camera goes when it adds the second person. <laughs> so no, I didn't know whether I was going to be at the top or the bottom. I'm like, I'll just go in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> Hello and welcome to everybody joining. We're excited to have you here. Um, so for folks who don't know you, Megan, you are a podcaster. You're a designer. You're an author, you are a teacher for other designers, you do all of the things. <laughs> yes, I have done many, many things. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else you want to add to a little introduction? Um, I think you pretty well covered it, yeah. <laughs> I, all the I design knitting patterns, I've done books, um, I... I teach a course for new designers, which is new and exciting. <laughs> um, yeah, I've done markets before and, and workshops and yeah, all, all sorts of fibery, fibery things. <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. So I asked this question, I think I've only done it one other time, but what are three words that you would use to describe yourself? Oh. <laughs> I guess um, the first one that comes to mind is uh, like smiley because <laughs> that's 
just we're in like a good place for that default mood yeah is is smiley and giggly uh, <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> um oh geez put me on the spot here <laughs> it's actually I'm, funny that you mentioned that because i just watched one of your podcasts last week um yeah. and watching it i'm like we're gonna be dangerous together because i also do all of my giggles <laughs> When we get, um, my sister I was a really big part of Poop and Pain for, for a really long time. And um, we would do markets together and we have the same laugh. And so, and you could hear us from like across the hall, basically. We would get, we would get other vendors coming, oh, I heard you and your sister giggling away over there. <laughs> Hey, at least you weren't screaming. So well, exactly. I know there's 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 worse default moods to have, I guess. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I so, guess another word I would say I'm crafty. Um, I kind of do all the things. I knit. I crochet a little bit. I do watercolors. I do all sorts of arts and crafts with my daughter and. Um, yeah. And then I guess for number three, I would say uh, maybe outdoorsy, I guess. Yes. We, we do like to spend a lot of time outside. Um, and yeah. <laughs> so perfect. Yeah. So maybe we'll go ahead and start with your life outside of designing, since we're kind of already in that discussion. <laughs> um, you know, I had, you know, asked the question and you mentioned that you are crafty you know, enjoy lots of different crafts and, mm -hmm. and enjoy the outdoors and family. So do you want to talk a little bit more about each of those aspects? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess if we're talking about craftiness, that is kind of something that I've always done. Um, it's always been a big part of my family. Like I've lots of artists and crafters um, and like carpenters and you know people that you we are people that use our hands to create things in in all sorts of different forms so i grew up yeah i grew up with um you know carpenters for dads and grandpas and my mom did paintings and um all sorts of other things my sister um does lots of like graphic design and pen and paper things and my brother does comic books and then i kind of do more the craft side of things i was very into like collage for a long time and um cross stitching i did a lot of cross stitching when i was younger i do a little bit i just taught myself how to do needlepoint so that's been something fun um and then recently I have um, a friend out here in, she lives in Vancouver, which is very close by to me. She does um, things with natural dyes and she makes uh, watercolors out of plants <laughs> <laughs> and other things and rocks and minerals. And it's um, a Caitlin French, if anybody's curious, but I recently picked up some of her watercolors. So I've been dabbling, dabbling with that and channeling my grandmother a little bit. <laughs> that is so fun. Yeah. So fun. Yeah, so you did a lot of that as a kid and it's just continued, just yeah. continued into adulthood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I can already tell my daughter is exactly the same. Her room looks <laughs> just stuff everywhere and little projects and little things. And I'm like, I just want your room to be clean, but that was also me, <laughs> so I can't be too hard on her. <laughs> I also, my, I don't know if my mom was much of like a crafter as a kid. She was very much like a tomboy. She loved to be mm. outside and playing outside. Um, and I did more, She, but she did sewing. So she taught me how to sew and I dabbled in all of the things. <laughs> and, yeah. Um, but <laughs> Before I started dabbling in all of the crafts, she likes to talk about how when I was little, I just like organized everything in my room in like grocery bags. And so she called me the bag. <laughs> <laughs> I just had all these projects and things. So, oh, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of what I used to do. Yeah, organizing things. And like, I had beads. I had a huge bead collection. I didn't make anything with beads. I just 
organized them <laughs> like a tackle box I had a big giant tackle box and they would get reorganized <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so fun okay so uh, we were gonna go on the tangent of outdoorsy stuff but now let's go ahead and talk about how you started knitting <laughs> <laughs> well um when I was probably I would say eight or nine young um my grandma taught me how to knit um, because she was from Holland. So proficient knitter, um, always has been, except she was left-handed. And so she knit backwards. And um, I was the youngest, well, I am the youngest granddaughter. Um, and so she tried with everyone. She tried teaching her daughters. She tried teaching all the other grandkids and like nobody could do it because she was all backwards and like she couldn't teach because everyone else was right-handed. Um, and then, I don't know, she was able to teach me, even though I'm right-handed, and it just made sense. She was so excited that like, <laughs> she was able to teach somebody. Um, yeah, so that kind of stuck. Um, I guess, like, I mean, I was young, so I flitted around to everything. Uh, and then I would say when I was in my early 20s, uh, my sister was living at home too. And we, what happened? She was knitting a scarf or something like a really, really chunky scarf. And that's when like really chunky knits were just starting to be like a really big thing. This was back in like 2008 or something. And I was like, Hey, like, do you know what Etsy is? Like <laughs> you could, we could make these and like sell them. And we had just gotten like a GST check, which is like a a rebate check from the government basically as so we had just gotten those in the mail and we're like well let's let's just go to michael's and buy this yarn and like start a company and so we did um yeah and we started making really chunky knit things and we did markets and uh, my sister was going to school for graphic design so she actually like used our company for her schoolwork so she branded our entire company um while she was in school uh so that was that was pretty awesome <laughs> um, so yeah and eventually like we did really well with with selling things but as like any knitter knows when you knit that much uh it's really hard on your body um, we also started having babies. Um, we kind of got pregnant at around the same time. And like, yeah, it was just not a feasible really thing anymore. So we were, we were kind of trying to figure out where to go next. Like we knew we wanted to keep going, but we we're like, this just is not sustainable. Like our bodies can't do this anymore. <laughs> so we, um, we were at Knit City, which is like a, um, a, fiber festival in Vancouver and it was one of the very first ones and we were beside um tin can knits um Alexa she's also from Vancouver and um she had like this was before tin can knits was even tin can knits so this was <laughs> 10 years this was 11 years ago or something um and so she had she was dyeing yarn at the time and then she also had a couple of like printed patterns like, I didn't even know what patterns were even. Um, I had no idea that like patterns existed or anything. So her, the very first like knitting pattern I ever bought was the pot blanket from her. And then that's kind of how we realized how we could translate like, oh, these knitted chunky things into like something that okay, we only have to knit this once. <laughs> and then <laughs> Katie's a graphic designer. So she did all the, all the kind of other stuff. And yeah, that's kind of how it, um, how that evolved uh, over the past 20 years, 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> that is so fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, so then, I mean, I guess, okay, first question is. <laughs> Sorry, that was a really long <laughs> How long were you selling the knits before you started? With I, ooh, I'd say probably about four or five years. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, we started with just a couple small markets. We did sell on Etsy as well, but um, didn't really get too, too big there. And then there was one year, I think we did like eight or nine Christmas markets. 
<laughs> and that was that was a lot. Yeah. So well, that's when we were like, we can't do this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I started I also started with doing hand knits, but I only was like three months in and I'm like, I'm not gonna be able to do this forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's hard. When, especially when you're doing like the chunky ones, mm -hmm. uh, it's like your whole arm has to do it. It's not just your hands. So, yeah. Yeah. How long? How long did you? Um, like, what did you? What were you making? When... Uh mostly hats. Some headbands. I had like some cowl things. Oh. Actually, um, cozy up knits. Cozy. Yeah, cozy up knits. Uh, I used to watch a lot of their podcasts mm -hmm. and I bought some of their patterns that were their, like their market patterns. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, those were my favorite ones because they were more interesting than like my super basic ones, but then they were, cause they were a lot of them were cabled, but then oh. they were more time consuming than the basic yeah. ones. Yeah. Well, and then once, when you work out like, okay, how long is this taking me to do and the materials and how much am I selling this for? It's like, not paying myself properly <laughs> no <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. and yeah. it can also still be hard to get to that point as a designer as well <laughs> yeah absolutely I'm on in all honesty I'm like just there right now like <laughs> last month I, I kind of gave myself a raise and like oh I feel like a real like Congratulations. I can actually like do this now, which is pretty cool. And it, yeah, it took 12 years to get there, but <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is so exciting. Yeah. Okay. What was my okay? So then I wanted to go into talking about your book because that's part of the story too. Or your <laughs> books. How many do you have? Or uh, you... we have through three. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's gonna be four, but the fourth one kind of overlapped with 2020. So we kind of next that and <laughs> <it initially. laughs> um, but yeah so we have three books um yeah and so it really came from that whole super chunky era that you were working in correct <laughs> it did it did yes our first book was strand and kind of what we used to do is um, I know there was big chunky yarn out there, but we actually inherited, um, when my grandma passed away, we inherited all her yarn. So we, um, like, and this was before like marling was a big thing too, <laughs> but uh, we would marl all the yarn together to make our own like big chunky things. Um, so we, yeah, our first book, Strand, was, um, was based on that. So we made, um, we partnered with um, Cascade Yarns, I think, provided all the yarn for us, and um, they, yeah, they just sent us a giant, like, the biggest box of yarn I've ever gotten, <laughs> like, which was great, <laughs> and then I just got to make, make up a bunch of patterns, and um, yeah, we did a, a Kickstarter for it, which, um, which was really amazing. I know you just did a Kickstarter as well, which went really good. Yes. Congratulations <laughs> on that. <laughs> I'm excited to get my books <laughs> or my magazines. I magazines or books? I don't even We're know. We're calling them zines because yeah. it's like a smaller magazine. Yeah. I'm excited anyways. <laughs> I, I usually actually refer to them as issues or books, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So how did that whole book writing process go? Obviously, it didn't go too terribly. You did more. <laughs> did more. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was it was tough. But I think the thing that made it easier for me, like I definitely wouldn't have been able to do it if it was just me. Like I can make the things and I can make the patterns like no problem. I can do all the math like spreadsheets. Yes, that is where I'm at. Um, the other side of things, so like the graphic design and like the layout and, and all of that kind of side of things, um, that was all Katie. So she was actually the driving force behind doing these books because she wanted to make a book. Like she wanted, <laughs> that's what she was really passionate about. So she's like, can you do the patterns and I can do the books? Like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> so she kind of took over on, on that side of things. Um, how many patterns did we have in that one? I think we had nine. 
and kind of most of them were already done um, because we those are kind of the things that we had been making for the markets. Like when we st when we were knitting things, it, like I said, I didn't know what knitting patterns were, so <laughs> we just kind of made those ones into ones for the book, uh, and it seemed to work out uh, seemed to work out pretty well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so fun. So when I I first kind of really started knitting in early 2018. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I was like, I kind of had, was familiar with your podcast. But before I so like summer of 2017, I was living in Denver for an internship and met Rachel Lundstrom. Oh, in yeah. real life. <laughs> so she was my in real life friend. And then I found out that she was a yarn dyer. And then I learned about the whole world of yarn yeah. and stuff. And she had your book the the first book and yeah. you know yeah. she, she she bought it from the kickstarter oh yeah <laughs> that's so fun so yes i i knew a little bit more about you because of her because yeah she, <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool <laughs> so now you aren't doing so much of the the big chunky nets how mm -hmm. did that like evolution to what you're doing now progress um well because when we started with the the chunky knits like it was a lot of repetition I mean we did it for a couple years I was making there was one scarf in particular it was this brioche like infinity scarf thing with buttons I probably made like 200 of <laughs> so I was over it like I wanted to knit smaller things I wanted to get into more detail I wanted to try new things like I really didn't know too much outside of that because I didn't have the time to act any time I was knitting I was just doing that so when we kind of yeah when we kind of realized that we're not going to be doing this anymore we're going to be focusing more on patterns uh it gave me a lot of freedom to try different things like knitting socks I had never knit socks before so like I didn't make a pattern right away but you know, it just gave me, it gave me the time and like the space to, to try new things. And so it was, yeah, I was able to kind of evolve, um, evolve from there. And then while we were, while we were actually doing the Kickstarter for our um, book Strand, uh, the year before, I think, it was when I first started doing um, like, more intricate patterns and like I did my first cardigan pattern and like that's when I really started to feel like a designer was with the Quinell cardigan that's the one that kind of was like oh this is nice <laughs> <laughs> do you have it with you right now do you have mm -hmm. a sample? do you have the sample to show I do yeah. I uh is it here let, I can go check it might be in my <laughs> closet it might be in my storage but it might be in my closet let me check <laughs> I am just sitting here. I'm actually knitting one of Megan's patterns. This is the Mama cardigan. And I'm not doing a very good job of looking at the screen. <laughs> um, I've actually, if you've been following me for a while, you know I've been working on this for a while. But this is the one I'm working on. Do you recognize it? <laughs> I can recognize it. <laughs> I know that I one. Dropped a bunch of stitches, but we've saved them. So, <laughs> um, I do have it actually. <laughs> so this is—it's hard to show because it's also giant. Uh, <laughs> oh, and broken. Oh. I'm like wearing it too much. <laughs> Need to do a little repair. But it's a big um, kind of open cardigan with uh where is the sleeve even my goodness this thing is huge <laughs> but with some just knit and pearl texture on it and um, this is with the fiber company cumbria light and <laughs> it was actually a little bit of a mistake um when i because they had sent out a call for designers and so i sent them kind of my idea and they're like okay like do you want to do it in in this yarn i said like, great i'd never worked with the yarn before I figured light, um, it was a DK, but they're in Scotland. <laughs> and so yarn weights are a little bit different uh, than they are here. So a DK is actually 
not what I would call a DK. It's like a, a heavy fingering, maybe like smaller than a sport weight. So what ended up, you know, what I thought was going to be a DK weight cardigan, it was actually a fingering weight cardigan <laughs> as one of the first things that I, you know, designed and committed on <laughs> the yarn company. So I, oh, I guess I have to do it. So I did it. And um, I was really proud of myself. So yeah, this is kind of the first, the first one that I ever, it's a hundred degrees in here, but <laughs> <laughs> that is so fun. I can't really see much of it. So but... cozy. Yes, very cozy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to, because I've been wanting to go on this rant anyway, complain about DK weight yarns in general. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> because of that reason, like <laughs> here in the states, like sometimes you get a DK weight, and it's like, this is not what I expect DK weight to be. Oh, when I think of DK, I think of like slightly less than worsted. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I oh, it's too bad. I it's blocking right now, so it's soaking wet. But I just found off a cowl last night and I had started it and I was finishing up one yard and then added another and they're both DK weights but they're not the same way. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're calling no. it the design feature and <laughs> rolling with it. Great. If anyone's wondering how we come up with these brilliant ideas, that's how. Yeah. <laughs> it works really well for the pattern because the whole idea I have several patterns now that are called in a mood and you just oh. do what you're in the mood for and so there's you can just swap between stitches and all this stuff and change your yarn weights and stuff like that and so you know yeah. I don't have to feel too bad about my sample <laughs> looking no. at two yard weights no it's supposed to be this way yes. <laughs> yes okay that's so fun um so talking about your more recent designs, how would you describe like your aesthetic or what you're trying to do with your designs or how you're inspired by them? That kind of um, well, usually I stick to um, things that I want to wear. Um, I make things that I want. <laughs> um, I had for a little while, like, in my early career, I was like, all right, what are the popular patterns right now? And like, what are people buying? And what are people making? And like, I try to kind of try to fit myself into that little area. Um, and that was a huge mistake. <laughs> and with my, because um, I'm doing like the beginner designer workshop, um, I did a pattern, one of the very like first things in it, and I'm very like adamant about it is make sure that you're designing for yourself and not what you think other people are going to want. Um, Cause that's a whole guessing game. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then you can't like, you're never really being true to yourself and, and um, you know, your collection ends up like your collection. It doesn't have to be a collection, just your body of work, your, your entire design thing just starts to, feel disconnected because you're trying to do so many different things so if you just stick to what you want and the colors that you like and the things that you like to knit and like I am a I'm a product knitter um you know there's process knitters and product knitters I am a product knitter so if you like I like stockinette because I like the way it looks you know and I like a little bit of detail but I want to be able to wear the thing at the end that's my goal <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um yeah so i just i just design what i want <laughs> and what i feel is missing um and i really like using um mini schemes and like scraps uh, because that's i have a lot in my stash so i i like stash that i mean i don't have a huge stash but i do like to use what's in there so i'm like well how can i like make this work a little bit so um you'll see i have like lots of socks that have mini skeins and I have a sweater that's coming out and I'm working on a sweater right now that's literally just all scraps um pretty much which is great <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and I will say you know for any designers listening in it can be difficult to figure out what you actually want <laughs> especially yeah. like I I kind of you know 
dove right into designing pretty quickly after I started really getting into knitting. And so I still was like trying to figure it out. I wasn't trying to make things for other people, but I was kind of just trying to explore and try new techniques and all these different things. And mm -hmm. it was, you know, as true as I could be to myself at that point, but it really doesn't feel authentic to me now. <laughs> yeah, I feel exactly the same way. Yeah. And <laughs> I have had up until recently, I had this clash of what I like to wear and what I like to knit were very different. Yeah. <laughs> because I also, it's like the stockinette stuff that I like to wear, but I found that just so boring and just like, I literally would fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so it was like my designing, it, like it had to fulfill more, be more, have more attention. Mm -hmm. and it had to be more interesting and challenging for me where now that I'm doing more with helping other designers with design circle and everything I've realized that, that actually fulfills that like challenging need that I have and I'm enjoying more of the knits that I actually like to wear <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like well because your I'm brain is working on other things like outside you know what I I feel that so much. <laughs> like, I feel like, yeah, I, I started off the same, like doing things because I wanted to try the technique. If you, yeah, if you look back at my older stuff, there is more technical things because I wanted to try technical things. And you're right. Now that I'm doing something else outside of designing, my designs have gotten much simpler. Yeah. <laughs> That's so interesting. <laughs> so I'm really excited because it's, you know, now I finally have some ideas where I'm like, this actually feels like something I'm excited to wear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I've been trying for a little while to, you know, actually do colors that I really love. Because mm -hmm. that's a big part of actually enjoying what you wear, I think. Yes. Uh, but I think it's so hard when there's yarn dyers making all these beautiful colors. <laughs> They're gorgeous, even if you're not going to wear them. Yeah. I know. I, I think about all these like beautiful speckled yarns and things that are out there and like they're so beautiful and they're so fun to knit with. And then what do I wear like every single day is my plain green like Brooklyn tweeds cardigan. <laughs> <laughs> Which is beautiful but it's not you know it's not it's a single color it's you know we're don't, not doing a lot of it's, it's a green cardigan. <laughs> And, uh, the folks around me like to mention that I wear gray on gray on gray. Like everything I wear is always gray. So um, yeah, I have black, have black and pink. Those are my yeah. <laughs> Although this, you know, this feels pretty true to me. You know, yeah. it, it's dark and it's moody, and I do, I love purples and turquoise teals are my thing. <laughs> anyway, we kind of totally went off. Uh, well, I think about kind, of, kind of speaking about that too, um, you know, you were saying how it's difficult to stick to kind of what you, what you think. And, and there was like an exercise that I created that, um, I hope you don't mind if I share it, nope, yeah. <laughs> um, but basically, um, what I do every once in a while, and, um, this is kind of a part of the course as well, is I get you to like, just write your name in the middle of the page and set a timer for five minutes and then do like lines out and like word bubbles of just all the things that you like uh, the things that you like to knit the things that you like to wear the colors that you like the styles that you like like whatever words you can think of that just feel like you write those all the way around and just spend five minutes like writing down everything and then after that like go through and pick you know five to seven of your key kind of keywords because there'll be ones that you're like oh yeah whatever but the ones will stand out so they make an actual list of those ones and then just like have it somewhere you know because then you can when you're sketching your designs or when you're you know if you're just a knitter and not a designer and you're picking out yarns or you're picking out patterns it's like okay on my list I have casual and like every day those are the things like I'm not a fancy person. <laughs> I wear sweatshirts and like I want a comfy cardigan and I want cozy everyday things in my wardrobe. So is this lace shawl really authentic to me? Maybe not. Is it going to be fun to knit? 
sure. And like that might, you know, that might tip the scales if you're not, if you don't care about wearing it so much. But yeah, if, if you're, if you want to stick to kind of that, then having that little list um, is, is super handy. Um, for me, color is too, because um, I usually do like jewel tones and darker things and um, kind of really, you know, muddy, like earthy colors. And I, I'm not going to make something in neon, even though it's going to be really fun. <laughs> it's not really going to go with all my other stuff, unless it's socks, because socks, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And to piggyback on that, that exercise or similar kind of exercise is really helpful for branding when you're a business. So for designers who are wanting to have a business of their designs, that is like so, so, so helpful for actually determining what you want to share, how you want to show up, all of the different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I was I just think trying... that I'm a big, big fan of lists and writing things down and like having things on real paper um, and like visible. <laughs> yeah. Guys, yeah. we had a question earlier that I forgot to go back to. Um, they asked, what's the difference between DK and sport weight yarn? And sport weight is lighter or thinner than DK weight. Yeah, it's kind of like in between fingering and DK, unless <laughs> your DK comes from Scotland. <laughs> 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 Yes. Okay. Um, I don't know if there was a, a natural segue to, to anything there, but a question I thought of today for asking you is, is there somebody in the yarny world that has been especially influential for you? Um, that's a great question. <laughs> I I do think there are a lot of designers that I really admire um, because they kind of have a similar style or just like um, just a way of presenting like I um, photos are something that I've always really struggled with and I feel like now I'm kind of just getting there with that too um, so it's really exciting for me um, so like photography has a really big impact on me so like Andrea Mallory I really love hers and Tin Can Knits I know does really great photography um I'm not sure if you know Abby Dahl of um she's uh her and Dank Fiber are together and they did like the Sorel sweater um and a couple other things but she's a she's a photographer like in real life <laughs> and mm -hmm. she actually took the pictures she's also from uh, Vancouver area. So she did pictures for um, one of my designs, actually. She was making a course about um, photographing knitwear. And um, so she used me as kind of like a, a model test, you know, thing. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I feel like um, people with strong visual presence, for sure. Um, and then I know there's a lot of yarn dyers too. Like I'm pretty loyal to like the yarn dyers that I use and like the people that I, that I like. Um, we were talking about Rachel earlier. I've used her yarn in lots of, lots of designs. She does like beautiful kind of watercolory, like just lovely, lovely things. And then um, I work a lot with uh, Midnight Cravings who is out in the Canadian prairies. <laughs> um, they do like wonderful tonals and um, just beautiful, like rich colors. And then some more like um, commercial yarns, like um, the fiber company I've worked with lots in Brooklyn Tweed. Um, yeah, yeah, because they all ha kind of have my palette. So <laughs> it's like, if I can just like pick from you guys, then, then I know everything's gonna look good. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I think that's another thing that's like, part about the whole color thing is like I've worked with these dyers and I love working with them but it's like they don't actually fit anymore yeah. and then it's also like the struggle between I love working with these dyers but also there are so many other dyers I would love to work with. I know. <laughs> There's so much yarn out there. There is. There really really is. 
I actually, I'm gonna, um, I had the company Oval. They actually just sent me a bunch of samples um, just because they wanted me to have them and uh, they're all beautiful. But I actually was reading about them. They like, they're having a sale right now on their gift cards because they can't like produce things as much. I guess they had a really hard time um, with getting things shipped. And because they're kind of like a small, um, like a small company, uh, their dyer, like their dye house actually dropped them as a customer. <laughs> and then they went to another dye house and they like, ruined all the yarn they had left oh. so they had to sell it at like a crazy discount so yeah um if anybody watching wants to go look at some beautiful yarn you can go there i don't know if they have any right now but they are having a sale on their gift cards so they can get more yarn <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. and it's all very beautiful yeah and to clarify for our yarn dyers here we do love you when I say there's too much yarn, it's an internal struggle. Oh, yes, it's, it's not. It's not. There's too much yarn in the world. There's just too much that I want, <laughs> and my house is not big enough, <laughs> and I can't knit fast enough. <laughs> yeah. Time is a huge issue. <laughs> yes. Oh. Have you ever? Um, speaking of time and knitting, have you ever hired um, a sample knitter before? I haven't yet, but I'm getting more and more tempted because what I wear, want to wear, is like pullovers. Yeah. And I am also a product knitter. And so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just thinking for your, for your designs coming up for your books and stuff too, um, you know, is that something that you that you thought about because we we have used the sample knitter a couple times uh and yeah it's pretty awesome extending away yarn and then getting this whole <laughs> main I, thing just comes to you but i actually <laughs> kind of started thinking about it not as seriously but it was like seeing all of these other designs that other designers are creating and I'm like i don't have time to make those maybe i hire somebody to make those for me <laughs> Yes. Well, I keep working on my designs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they can make me other people. Totally. Mm. Totally. Yeah. And I've always wanted to make like a weekender because everyone has a weekender and that's like the shape that I love. I, I don't have time to make a weekender. <laughs> I just realized like last year in the, oh, what is the, the event on Ravelry that they do every like November, December. Oh, the indie designer knit along? Yeah. 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 I realized that, like, basically, I'm obsessed with Alicia Plummer's patterns. I've never yeah. knit any of them. But, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just going through the different designs, and I'm like, I'm just going to stop designing and have her wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. It oh. hasn't happened yet, but. <laughs> I know, you know what, that's a really great thing because during that time, um, the, the knit along, oh, hi, Fred. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> um, here, I'll move this thing over here. <laughs> um, he, what was I talking about? Sorry. During that indie. Oh, right. During the indie designer knit along, um, is like the only, I make sure that I do choose something of somebody else's to knit so that I get a chance and usually something big and honestly usually it's not for me like usually it's for my daughter or for my husband <laughs> <laughs> that is fingering weight <laughs> honeycomb brioche so <laughs> I think honestly I think that sample took me a year to make as well so don't feel bad <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's funny because like I had decided okay I'm like going forward I'm only designing in DK way no more for you <laughs> and I fell in love well I really wanted cardigans or pullovers in my wardrobe and so I decided to pick a couple mm -hmm. from other designers and I ended up purchasing like three sweater, sweater quantities I think <laughs> really <laughs> Oh, it's life. <laughs> yeah. But fingering 
white sweaters and cardigans and things are so nice to wear. <laughs> like, I don't know. I know you're in North Carolina, so I'm not really sure what the climate is there. But here, it just rains all the time. Um, so we don't really get super cold. And I mean, it's hot right now, but we have maybe like a month or two where it's hot, actually hot outside. And then the rest of the time, you're yeah, you're just wearing sweaters. So like fingering weight is great because then you can wear it inside too and like yeah I don't know yeah. people are scared of fingering weight but don't be scared of fingering weight <laughs> <laughs> we are in the south here so I grew up in Montana okay so I'm used to cold winters but here we don't have much of winter <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I've been there in like September yeah yeah so we yeah. have really mild winters but my husband keeps the temperature inside colder than I would, so I'm usually wearing another layer even throughout the summer. <laughs> yeah, then fingering plate, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> Hello. Somebody just said hi. hi. <laughs> uh -huh. See you too. <laughs> um. Okay. So when we were talking about the yarn, I thought it'd be fun to talk about. You've done things with putting together yarn oh yeah like, <laughs> sure yeah um I've done a couple different things with with yarn um I don't really have anything right now because shipping in Canada just went up again so <laughs> unfortunately I'm not really going to be able to do anything anymore um but I have done things in the past and it's been really really fun um there was one Thing that I did where I actually got people to send in um, this was pre 2020 um, and I think after that it just wasn't feasible anymore because <laughs> shipping got all weird um, but people would send in like a skein of fingering white yarn and then I would collect them all and wind them into mini skeins and then rearrange them and shuffle them all around and make little sets and then send those out. So you would send in a skein of yarn that like maybe you didn't like anymore. And then you got um, kind of five mini skeins uh, in return. And um, <laughs> that's a <okay>. phone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I should have plugged that in way earlier. No, that's not <laughs> There we go. <laughs> um, and that kind of morphed into, I actually started getting a yarn from like different Canadian yarn dyers and making mini skein sets out of that. So um, yeah, I would collect it from all different people and like make curated little sets. Um, for a while we had like a subscription, um, like a monthly subscription that we did that was really fun. Um, so I'm thinking, I haven't, said this out loud yet but <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking because I do still have quite a bit of yarn like in um in my storage unit um waiting for for something so I think I might do like some sort of advent thing with some of the stuff that's that's still left and we have like maybe put some because we have other things in our shop too, like stitch markers and scissors and all sorts of things. So I'm thinking of maybe like doing some sort of super random, amazing advent. Yes. <laughs> but that's, yeah, just, just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't actually put any of that into action yet. <laughs> yeah, that's so, so, okay. First question, how did you get into adding the other things to your shop? Um, well, when we started doing Knit City, um, after we, because that's kind of the one market that we've done. We've done every single Knit City um, that there's ever been. And it's very strange because this is actually going to be the first year that we're not doing it. <laughs> um, so it's really weird to not be doing a market this year. Um, but when we were doing knit city after we had stopped making um like making the scarves and things we realized like people love knitting patterns but um 
being at a market, it's very expensive. So you have to pay for your entrance fee. You have to get all your booths set up and, and, you know, we're about an hour away from the venue. So we booked a hotel and it's expensive to do. You have to pay to be there. Um, and knitting patterns are a very like low cost item. So it was really hard to kind of make that up. So yeah, we decided to, we started off with, um, little wooden cases for needles and we just you know we just had them there and and people went bonkers over them. they loved them so much so it was like oh okay like maybe this is something we can start doing so then we started finding little vintage like or vintage inspired scissors and things like that and little notions so yeah we just started curating um little things for the market um and then eventually that translated over onto onto our website yeah. <laughs> and it's fun just like because I can only have so much stuff like I don't I live in a little tiny two-bedroom apartment I can't have a lot of stuff but I really enjoy finding things and <laughs> like collecting things so if I can do that and have it at my storage place then still look at them and enjoy them <laughs> so that's kind of my loophole around around that was like, <laughs> adding things to the shop <laughs> that is so fun so we've pretty well talked about everything except for your your workshop I think um out of everything that you've done so far what have you enjoyed the most or do you think is like the most fun thing that you've done <laughs> really really hard um <laughs> I feel like because as a knitting wear designer, like I'm alone a lot of the time. <laughs> I work from home, you know, I don't really have any human contact <laughs> during the day. <laughs> but it's, I would say probably my favorite thing is, is the knitting markets. Um, because you actually get to like, I do a YouTube channel. And so like, people there's a little connection that way, you know, and there's a little connection through Instagram and there's little connections here and there and everywhere. But when you actually get to see people in person and like interact with them and give them a hug and see with them in real life and like see the things that they're making and you get to talk to yarn dyers that you've only ever, you know, emailed before and, and all that kind of stuff. It's the markets. It's yeah. It's the seeing that kind of energy um, that always gives me like, you know, everybody loses their mojo a little bit sometimes. And then you go to a, a, some sort of knitting event and it's just like, everything's exciting <laughs> again, you know? <laughs> and I'm so inspired again by everyone that's there. Yes. Yeah. It's like, um, is Knit City your favorite place you've been? <laughs> yeah. well, honestly, we've only, uh, we've really only done Knit City as a design like as a designer I've really only done Knit City um so I'm completely biased but I am going to say that yes it is the best one <laughs> Rhinebeck well either are we going to Rhinebeck you know what? Rhinebeck's always been on my list but I am on the west coast <laughs> so that's probably not in the cards for me um anytime soon my mom used to live in Philadelphia and I should have there was like a tiny overlap where like I knew what Rhinebeck was and she lived in Philadelphia. <laughs> so I, I should have jumped on that when I had the chance, but now she lives in Arizona. So um, <laughs> I, I don't see Rhinebeck in my immediate future. Maybe, maybe when my daughter's grown and, you know, things are a little less hectic at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, especially now that I live in North Carolina, I like, been toying with idea but at the same time I like want to wait until like I know I like, have friends that are gonna be there <laughs> so, I still haven't decided if I'm going this year or not <laughs> yes. are there any like events in North Carolina kind of that happen yeah I think the biggest one is the Southeastern Animal Fiber Fair which I went to for the first time last year and it is Either a couple weeks before or a couple weeks after Rain Beck. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, that was fun. Um, and I just stayed. It's only a few hours from here. And I just stayed with a friend. 
who lives in the area and I was just there for one day. There's also a small town, I don't know how far it is from the fair, but <laughs> there is a local yarn shop that does a whole thing that weekend too. So I was in a dyer's booth one day at the local yarn shop and then I was at the fiber fair one day. Oh, but, cool. Yeah, that was my <laughs> first time at a, well, I guess there was a small event in Charlotte last year that I went to, but that was like my first real fiber festival. <laughs> <laughs> it was so interesting because like, because I've been a part of Knit City from the very, very, you know, baby beginnings when knitting was like, was it just starting to like come up a little bit? Um, and just to see how it's grown from like this little, like, what is this thing to, you know, now it's at a huge venue and like, not counting last year because last year was a little bit odd, but, um, you know, people couldn't travel and things like that. For the last like true pre pandemic, you know, um, Knit City, there were thousands of people there from like, people were flying in from you know England and all over the states and across the country and it was like wow <laughs> it was so crazy <laughs> yeah it was just amazing yeah well and it's you know something I've kind of thought about sometimes too even Rhinebeck obviously it started as like a small event and now it's mm -hmm. like I think that like all of the knitters seem to know about yeah. <laughs> like that's like the gold yeah the gold star of of like I don't know if you're a true knitter in, unless you've been to Rhinebeck like I don't know if we're even part of the club <laughs> I, <laughs> okay um we are able to talk for a long time I think <laughs> I usually cut this off in an hour we might go a little over <laughs> But um, we still haven't gotten back to your outside of knitting and designing uh, and oh. the outdoors and your family and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Well, I have a family. It exists. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I have a cat, Fred. He's being a grump. Um, I have a daughter. She's seven. And my husband. And we live in um, Abbotsford, which is kind of like outside of Vancouver in B.C., and yeah, we really like um, kind of on the weekends and stuff, we go, um, I mean, there's so much nature out here. Like it's bananas. Um, you can just go kind of, there's so many beautiful places and hikes and lakes and rivers and, and all sorts of things. So um, and my husband uh, really enjoys four by fouring. So we have a 30 year old Jeep that we take out as a family and go find you know a little piece of river that no one's at and go have a campfire and and um yeah we just spend lots of time outside <laughs> so fun. i always love all of the pictures you share in your <laughs> about that is one thing i don't like when i'm like being better about my instagram usage i never catch all the little things and everybody's yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so fun. Um, and something I realized before our call, I had asked you about an interesting or fun fact, and I never shared it in any of the posts that I wrote. So I have to share it now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you had mentioned that in your early 20s, you were a DJ and you would play house music at bars and parties with your brother and your other friends. So that's yeah. so fun. <laughs> It feels like an entire lifetime ago. Like I was a totally different person. Um, but yeah, we used to, there was, I think, four of us, my, me and my brother, um, my like family friend who I've known since I was two, who is now my brother-in-law, actually. Um, and then an, another guy, we would, um, yeah, we would play house music and we had like a, a standing night at um, a couple of different places in our in our town and um, we would do house parties and go to Vancouver sometimes and do shows there and it was just a really really like yeah fun time in my life but also you know 
it feels so disconnected <laughs> from my life now. It's like, oh, like, yeah, that was, um, that was a, definitely a part of, of my life, but it's so, so different. Like, I th sometimes think about like me then and being like, what would she think of what I'm doing? <laughs> I think she'd be okay with it. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I think it's really, valuable to remember that we as humans change <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. and that, that does go into our knitting and our designing as well our preferences change our I mean our personalities change mm -hmm. interests change and yeah. okay you don't have to like expect yourself to stay a static person <laughs> yeah, exactly and you know I was talking to you about the um the little worksheet that I made about finding, you know, finding your words or whatever. Mm -hmm. In that little worksheet thing, I say too, like, this isn't set in stone. So mm -hmm. if this is your style right now, and these are the things you like right now, like, that's, that's great. Um, but do this again in like six months, or do this again in a year, and things will change. And like, that's, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. <change. laughs> yeah. One of my favorite things that I've ever heard, from like a business coach is, it's okay to change your mind <laughs> because yeah. we so often <laughs> like we have to stick with what we've already started or like the path we're on. And, mm -hmm. you know, she's like, when you change your mind, you're just making a more informed decision. <laughs> you have yeah. more information to back you up to, to change your mind. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I love that. So, <laughs> um, I change my mind all the time. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, do you have any of your other design samples with you to share? Oh, what do I have here? Um, I just finished my, my second row of knitting while we were talking. <laughs> I, I think I got maybe a row done on my sock. But. <laughs> you know, I really didn't think ahead, but I do have something that I knit as a gift. Um, so I just have it here, which is a design of mine. But this is the um, Aurora headbands. Yeah. <laughs> and it's actually a pattern that I made. Let's see, I haven't tried it with short hair yet, but yeah. <laughs> um, this one's for my mother-in-law. She requested mm -hmm. one last winter, and now it's the middle of summer, so I finally did it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and that's a pattern that I made. I released it last year, I think. And it's actually for like five different weights of yarn. So you can use fingering or sport weight or DK or like whatever. So it's kind of meant to just pull from your stash and then you can make this thing. Um, it makes really great gifts. <laughs> yeah, that is the one I want to make for myself because yes. I have bands that like, yeah, aren't super bulky. Yeah. yeah. The tabled ones. Like I, I sold a bunch of them when I did, had an Etsy shop and that's what I have. But I really, I want to make myself an Aurora headband. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's a double, so it's still warm, but it's not. Yeah, I, I wear that one a lot because <laughs> I um, don't want to have to do my hair. <laughs> um, I can show you something that is in testing right now. Sounds good. That. <laughs> uh, this is a sock that I'm working on. Well, the sock is done. The pattern's in testing. Uh, it's a sport weight sock, and um, it has the same kind of motif on it as uh, the Ironwood hat, which is um, a different one of my designs. So it just has this beautiful, like, arrow with twisted stitches, like, and just a sock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that will come out probably, I have to do pictures, and those <laughs> I always procrastinate on everything else is done so I'm just waiting on myself to do pictures when it's <laughs> not 100 degrees outside <laughs> yeah um if you have do you have time to chat for a few more minutes I don't want to like hold you no, no, I'm good <laughs> <laughs> um I have a feeling other designers are going to want to hear more about your photography and like you mentioned that you feel like you're finally getting to like where you want your photos to be. Do you have any tips to share or any words of wisdom or inspiration for fellow designers <laughs> also struggling with photography? Um, 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I think that um, has really helped is uh, look into some like uh, videos or things like that on uh, like portrait photography, just to learn a little bit about like light and how that affects uh, certain things. You don't really need like a great camera or, or anything like we, I have a, um, like a Nikon DSLR and I do have a nice lens for it, which helped tremendously. I'm not saying like good cameras don't make a difference because that, that lens itself um, makes a big, big difference. Um, but I'd say more than that, a good editing software. So um, for ours, we usually use like Lightroom because we have the Adobe Suite. So I learned how to use Lightroom <laughs> um, and pick some people like go on Instagram and, and find photographers that you like and you like their style and just like make a little Pinterest board or something of different photos that you like. And eventually you'll start to see a pattern um, of the kinds of things that you that you like um, and different poses and things like that. Um, I find I do my best photography when I am by myself um, because then I don't have to feel like a weirdo <laughs> posing and things like that. So practice, like, like totally practice as well. Like do your weird bottle faces in front of the, in front of the mirror and stuff like that. Um, because it does take a long time to get comfortable in front of the camera. Um, and Katie and I, uh, my sister, early on, we had talked about um, like hiring a model because photography was really difficult. So it's like, okay, well maybe like, maybe this is something we need to just like let someone else do. Uh, but we kind of decided against that. And the only reason we decided against that is because um, I, you know, started the YouTube channel. I have the Instagram, like kind of part of the brand is me, you know? So it kind of like once you add other people to that, it kind of takes away a little bit, um, which it feels weird even <laughs> like saying that. <laughs> But, but it's true. People see you as the designer, as the face of your patterns. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and if you think about like, if you think about, I'm I'm not saying that to always do what the popular designers are doing, yes. but if you <laughs> see like what a lot of those people have in common, it's they're their own models because you can see a picture of Andrea Mowry and know that it's Andrea Mowry and that's an Andrea Mowry pattern. Like those dots are very easy to connect. Very recognizable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, and even the style of photography mm -hmm. is, is, you know, her, I think her husband does, is her photographer. So he has a very distinct like style of photography. Um, it's like I was saying before about doing, you know, having a Pinterest board or something. If you like light and airy photos, like, um, you know, something like Petite Nets has also very just kind of distinct photos. Or do you like moodier things and like darker things like, like me? <laughs> so just kind of, you'll be able to find, find your style and then kind of stick to that. And then um, also look up Abby Dahl. She has a super distinct style. And anytime I see an, a pattern of hers, I remember the last one they came out with, I can't remember what it, exactly it was. I saw it on Ravelry or like a, someone had reposted it on Instagram or something. I was like, oh, that looks like Abby's photography. And then sure enough, it was like, yeah, one of her best. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I just thought that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you so much for sharing that. Do you have inside of, I don't remember, inside of Idea to Pattern Workshop, do you have a photography section? Not at the moment, um, because I don't, like, I don't feel like I have a lot of authority on it yet, <laughs> because I, in all honesty, like, the way I learned about photography was just trial and error, and trial and error, and 10 years of experience, and 10 years of, like, failing. <laughs> Not failing, like, we have yeah. pictures, they exist, but, like, yeah, just it took it took a really really long time. Was it? <laughs> Pardon me. 
<laughs> just figuring out what works and what doesn't. What you exactly. Like. Yeah, exactly. Um, mm -hmm. So just stick, stick with it. Or if you don't, like, it's totally fine if you want to hire that out. Like if you, if you think it's worth it to, because photography is sometimes I think something that gets overlooked, but that's, what's going to sell your pattern is photography. So maybe I should add a little, <laughs> maybe I should make another, cause that's the thing with the idea of pattern course too, is I'm just going to keep adding things to it as people bring things up. And I never really thought about doing something on photography, but you're right. Maybe I should. <laughs> 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 um, and for anybody who's inside of the design circle or interested, we did have Annalisa Miller, who is a hidden pearl on Instagram. She's a professional photographer who has done work for some designers. Um, but she she shared some of her tips and things like that too. So that's it. I'll have to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> you can always learn more, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know, there's tons of you know, you kind of mentioned this earlier, talking about portrait photographer, photography videos. There's tons of content out there on the interwebs about photography, photography tips. To, you know, there's lots of stuff out there. That you can't Lighting and <laughs> posing and things like what? Well, and, and there's even like specific ones for if you only have your cell phone and you can't invest in something else. Like there are courses and videos and things just for like, taking pictures with your cell phone. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually, I think her name is Amy Eaton. Um, she's kind of the person that I first was following when I first started my Etsy shop, because mm -hmm. she has stuff specifically for like product listings and I, specific things to cameras and specific things to phones and specific things about how to edit. And um, so I would I, if you're feeling overwhelmed by the option, <laughs> that is somebody that I recommend as well, who has a lot of different resources. But what was her name? Amy Eaton. E A T O N. She's okay. actually Canadian as well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're nice. We're <laughs> um. Okay, I think my last question for you is about when, like. Now you don't have Katie helping you all the time. Yes. <laughs> How has that gone? Or like, has it been a rough transition to, to being by yourself? Um, yes and no. Um, I only say no because um, for the past few years, um, she, like, she moved away to Hawaii for, um, for two years. So for those two and a half years or however long she was gone, I was essentially running the business by myself anyways. So it wasn't too difficult to kind of go back to that. Um, it, the one thing that Katie has always been really great with is like generating ideas and like keeping me on a bit of a schedule or like not keeping me on a schedule, but but helping me create a schedule and, and things like that and um, getting new, like the workshop that wouldn't have happened like without her because she was, able, she was able to like present it to me in a way that it wasn't like overwhelming because if too much stuff is happening at the same time like I have a hard time breaking it down into its steps um but like she's still she's still helping me with with that stuff like if I needed her to she would still be there to be like mm -hmm. all right let's go through this together and we'll like break it down and and you know here's all the steps that you need to do because she like she didn't leave because of bad terms or anything <laughs> like that she left because she um she started her own um she's becoming a breathwork practitioner so she's starting her own business um at doing breathwork um so you know, she's still going to help me with Pip and Pin on some of those aspects. And then on some of the aspects where, you know, of, of the business that kind of I took more control of, like um, the bookkeeping and taxes and, you know, financials. Um, that's something that I always was kind of in charge of because I, I enjoy that. <laughs> and like, that's just in totally in my wheelhouse. So like when it comes to doing that stuff for her business, I'm obviously just going to go help her, you know, set that up. So we're still like, a team. <laughs> um, but so yeah, in that aspect, it hasn't been too difficult. Um, I did have to, 
uh, like she is a graphic designer. So she did all the layouts and things like that. So I did, you know, have to watch a couple tutorials about how to use InDesign and, and things like that. <laughs> uh, but it hasn't been, it hasn't been too hard so, so far. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited for her journey, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's like, admire your relationship that you had and like how well, I mean, obviously you still have your relationship. Yeah. It's just different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but like just how well you like complimented each other. Yeah. And, and yeah. your different abilities, strengths. <laughs> yeah. No, we really did. Well, we do. Yeah. We still do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's definitely nice having a, a business partner who, yeah, you can like mesh so well with and the, and the things that, I didn't like doing she liked doing the things that she didn't like doing I liked doing and uh, yeah it's great so <laughs> okay so I thought of one more question actually okay. I had the original list I just forgot it um <laughs> how did the name Pippin Pin come along um <laughs> <laughs> that is actually our original name um we actually went through I think the last year or two years ago, we were debating on changing it. Um, we were trying to think up different things and, and nothing really like stuck. So we, we ended up keeping it the same, but um, Pip and Pin actually comes from our grandmas. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so on my dad's side, we have um, Pip and she, her nickname growing up was Pip Squeak. And so she had a little, um, she had a little tattoo on her arm with Pip um, and then Pin, was from my other grandmother. Um, she's the one who taught me how to knit. She was a seamstress. She was very crafty. So like a pin just felt, you know, nice and pip and pin went went together nicely. So yeah, it's named for um, for our grandmas. <laughs> Sweet, I love that. <laughs> so fun. Um, is there anything else you want to leave folks with? Anything else you want to share? don't know <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you are a designer um we have some things coming up with more workshops so we have the begin the idea to pattern one that we kind of do um I think I'm going to do it two or three times a year so that one will be starting up again in um the end of September we'll be starting another round of that and I've actually um, my daughter is in day camp this week, so I'm just finishing up the final touches on our newest one, which is going to be all about marketing and social media and promoting yourself and your patterns and all that kind of fun business stuff. <laughs> so that one will probably be coming out um, end of July or end of August. Yeah, end of August. <laughs> yeah. So many exciting things. I love <laughs> Just watching everything that you do. And I love, like, how many different tangents you've taken. <laughs> <laughs> um, where can people find you online if they're not already following you? Um, I'm on uh, Instagram as Pip and Pin. I am on Ravelry as Knit Pip and Pin. And we also have the Ravelry group, which we have some knit alongs happening there. And I have test knits and um, a little community there. Uh, what else do I have? I have my YouTube channel, the Pin Pin, Pin Podcast, and our website where you can find patterns and notions and yarn sometimes, <laughs> uh, which is pipandpin.ca. Perfect. Um, but there was one thing. Oh, for you talked about knit alongs. You have a sock knit along running right now, right? Yes. Yeah, I do. Um, six weeks of socks, um, and it's for any any sock pattern um if you do use a pip and pin pattern you get two entries and there's going to be prizes kind of at the end uh and that's going to end on august 12th so there's still four weeks left plenty of time to knit a pair of socks i think yeah <laughs> perfect well thank you so much for joining me today this was thank you for having me so fun it's <laughs> like one of those things where i like you know started thinking about folks that I wanted to have on the podcast like not on this is not the podcast <laughs> on, <laughs> on Instagram <live>. yeah <laughs> maybe someday you'll be on my podcast too I haven't done a lot yeah. of guest speakers yet but um like la end of last year I was thinking about folks and now it's like it's actually happening 
felt so far away and now it's here. Now it's here. <laughs> so, I think, so fun. I think, yeah, you approached me back in June, May or something. And I think we originally planned for August and then it got, yeah, bumped earlier. And it's like, yeah, no, it's very exciting. This is, I think, my first kind of live um, interview thing like this. So thank you so much for thinking of me. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. It was such a pleasure to have you. And I hope other folks enjoyed the little peek in that, I, you know, I feel like it just hopefully is a little bit deeper than what we typically share on Instagram to share a little yeah. bit <laughs> of who we are, who you are. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's more of a conversation. <laughs> yeah. Especially this one. I feel like I talked a lot about myself. But anyway, <laughs> thank you again. And the replay will be available for anybody who hopped on later and wants to catch the beginning as well. So, have a good rest Bye. of your day. <laughs> wow. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. If you found it valuable, please share the podcast with a designer friend. And if you have a minute, leave a review. It's so helpful for me and means the world to me. Chat soon.